Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are going to be taking a first look at a game that is currently in development. Uh, it is actually in an alpha, a closed alpha right now, so still pretty early in the game development process. This game is Arms Trade Tycoon Tanks. Uh, it is being developed by Fun Guy, Fun GI, uh, and it will be published by Microprose, the new Microprose. Now, this is a game we have covered. I know we're saying it's a first look, but it's a game we've covered on the channel before. There was like a Steam Next Fest demo available for this game over a year ago, uh, in which case we took a look at the demo. Now, at that time, the game was very different. Uh, the factory menu, for example, the world map uh, only had like, I believe it was like a 2D image, which frankly, I'm pretty, I was pretty fond of the graphics and the look of the game, but it wasn't a 3D world. It didn't have all the features built into it yet. Uh, there are additional features that have been built into it, but basically I believe they re-engined or at least sort of rebuilt the core elements of the game. And so that's what they've been up to over the last year. Uh, and they also ran a Kickstarter, which is atypical, I would say, if you have a publisher, but I don't know the details of their agreement with Microprose. So in any event, it was a little bit noteworthy that they ran a Kickstarter, which was pretty successful. I think they had a 10,000 pound goal. They got to 47,000, so obviously not funding the game entirely off of that, but subsidizing it, uh, of which they reached several stretch goals. And uh, that's where we find ourselves now. Uh, again, this is an alpha version of the game, so uh, still not uh, fully baked. Keep that in mind as you kind of watch this stream. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and jump in. Now, this is effectively, this is a game where you are a tycoon. It's a tycoon game, so you're managing a company. And instead of building random widgets and things like that, you're building tanks, as you would guess by the title of the game, which is an interesting concept and something that uh, not a lot of games have done. There was some really jank Factorio style arms management game. Um, and then there was obviously Sprocket, which was a tank design game, but less the the tycoon element of the game. Sprocket, which came out last year, earlier this year, I definitely think the way they had their open world sandboxy thing for your tank design I think, and I don't know that it's to its benefit, but I think Arms Trade Tycoon saw that and was influenced in some of their decisions that they made, but I don't want to make any assessments on this yet because I haven't played it since all these changes were made. So let's go ahead and jump in uh, to the game and uh, choose a new game. Now, in this game, as I said, you are managing a uh, arms manufacturer making tanks. Uh, there's going to be more than one nation, at least based on the Kickstarter. They should at least eventually have Germany as well, and I don't know how many others. Uh, in theory, the game could cover from World War I to the modern day, and that's what the imagery looks like. You got Abrams tanks on the, on the main screen as well. Uh, but right now, for the alpha build, it looks like Great Britain is the only option that we have, um, which is fine. Um, you can see here that uh, Britain was the first country to invent the tank, so it makes sense that we'd start there. Uh, and since then, among the leaders in tank design. After the clanking, Rumbiodes provided the imp or proved the importance of tanks in the First World War. The UK went on several in innovative ideas in tank design. Just after the First World War, Britain came to the conclusion that the best counter to a tank was another tank. That's true. And started to arm its vehicles with dedicated anti-tank guns and was the first country to do so in the shape of the Vickers No. 2. In the interwar period, Britain was behind in the idea of the tank at a concept deeply attractive to the most of the cash-strapped governments around the world. In the mid-1920s, Britain experienced, uh, experimented with a doctrine based around using the tank's mobility to fight somewhere other than the enemy's strong points. For that, she developed a series of medium tanks that had a com combined combination of firepower and mobility. This idea was further refined into the infantry and cruiser tank concept that lasted a few short years before the British started moving back toward the medium tanks this time with added protection. However, the move was interrupted by the Second World War. During the war, Britain created multiple heavily armored armored infantry tanks, such as the Matilda or Churchill. Equally from about the midpoint in the war, Britain began to think about the universal tank concept, which today we call the main battle tank. From after the war, Britain tended to build very survivable with good cross-counter mobility, country mobility, sorry, uh, and effective anti-tank guns. So that's the overview for the country that we're going to be playing as. We'll just keep it on normal difficulty. There appear to be a sort of an, an entry level uh, sort of it's it's called apprentice, but obviously easy, extra money and resources, weak competition for contracts, normal difficulties, entrepreneur and true tycoon is 
You're already nearly bankrupt when you're starting. Your rivals are really good. No one wants to pay for your tanks. So obviously that's the hard difficulty. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. We're going to go ahead and jump in and hit start. Okay, so we've got to pick our new name. I guess. Hmm. Maybe we'll just go. Well, is this the name? So no, our company name is down here. So what we're going to do for our tank company name, we're going to call us the, we'll call ourselves Butcher LLC. Congratulations, Tillian. I just appropriated your name. Actually, better that. Lord Tillian. Okay, arms trade ta tycoon tank. Welcome to the closed alpha test. Start your story as the owner of a newly built factory in the days when the Great War begins to unfold. Your task is simple. Design your tanks and make sure your company survives the first months in the game. The Elf allows you to test most of the activities in the factory grounds, research, engineering, design, administration, warehouse contracts, and even military campaign against various opponents. However, the world window remains locked. We decided to finish a few more things before we unlock the world for you in the future. This should not stop you from designing your tanks as, as the contracts will still land on your table. Hence, Britain badly needs new weapons that can help the country change the tide of war. Thank you to all who have come on with us in this journey. Don't forget to tell us what you think about the game. Use the available feedback button or simply stop by our Discord, okay? Um, H or question for help if you'd like us to get the word blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right, so the British Tank Corps has been formed a little bit early, July of 1940. I guess that's not truly, uh, not the real date, but uh, in any event, it's acknowledging the importance of High Command has decided to separate future tank regiments from the machine gun corps and assign them to a dedicated military branch with the official name of the tank corps currently four new tank regiments are under formation and you can expect new tank contracts to be announced soon so obviously the game's getting out ahead of itself a little bit world war one hasn't even started it's july 1914 and apparently the government is already issuing orders for something that has not been invented yet but uh, I digress. So you can see here there are several different buildings in this main screen. The main screen looks very different than the demo during Steam Next Fest. Uh, you can see there's a warehouse, a design bureau, engineering bureau, research bureau, administration, proving grounds, museum, and test drive. Uh, you can see here you click on an individual building and then the game kind of zooms you in. Um, honestly, I kind of liked the, the 2D version of this map a bit better when it was in the demo mode. Um, it's fine. It's just sort of generic-y 3D. Uh, but in any event, it looks like there's a number of upgrades you can make to various facility buildings. So you can see uh, if you click on each building, it gives you different facility options here. So the administration building is currently tier one. It looks like you can also add a maintenance office, fire stations, medical stations, heavy vehicle stations, bank department, construction department, lobbying office, and administration council. You hit the X button, we go down to production hall. You can see a whole bunch of different building things here for the construction hall. I'm assuming that's like the, the assembly line. Warehouse, presumably this is where you store goods and maybe finish tanks. Um, and you can see different upgrades for that. Um, design bureau, likewise, you can make different upgrades here. But all this stuff is appear appears to be tier one right now. The, everything on the map appears to be tier one. Test drive, also tier one. I believe you can do this if you want to like go drive your tank around and see things, uh, which was something that I don't remember being in the demo. I think that's one of the new features that I was very popular during the uh, during the Kickstarter. Um, okay, so what are we gonna do? I guess we've got looks like we've got 1.7 achievement points. We have 320 employees, 500 finance. So like, oh, that's 500,000 pounds, I suppose. Worker cost 24k, engineering cost 16k, building maintenance 8k, predicted balance of $452,000. We currently have 30,000 whatever of iron, 25,000 medium carbon steel, 10,000 rubber, 17,000 high carbon steel, and 15,000 glass. There's also rare metals, ceramics, plastics, and composites. No tanks stored out of a maximum of 50, 840 workers, 80 engineers, no administrators. So, should I be doing something? In the original demo, there was a tutorial. There's no available contracts right now. No 
No military campaigns. Suppose we can go to research and see what's going on here. So it looks like what we've already researched is riveted assembly, room board hull, which is sort of the boxy tank hull, wrought iron, mail mark one. Okay. So the mail mark one, is that an MG? Uh, no. Okay. I will say this is much less um, handholdy than uh, than the demo version. High running gear. Okay. So like I can, I have researchers. I can assign them to doing things. You can see here research is calculated in terms of man hours. So 900 MH means man hours of research, which I actually really like that concept of, hey, in terms of how much it's going to research, it's not some random point value. It's actually reflective of like, hey, when you assign people to this, it takes time. And based on the allocation of your resources, that time can be greater or less. And I, I actually really do like that concept. Solid lump of steel shaped like a shell, weighing six pounds, used for penetration of lightly armored targets, sometimes fitted with tracer elements. Take It'll take us 13 days. Cost. It doesn't look like it'll cost anything. Yep. So we're going to start working on a solid shot round. So we've got a naval gun. We've got common rounds, which are just standard HE rounds, which I'm assuming will probably explode on and destroy any tank in this era. But I think a solid shot round is useful, so we'll do that. Um, I don't know what I need mobility-wise. I wonder if we should just try and get in and... Can we just jump in and engineer a tank now? So we don't actually have any tanks designed yet, or do we? Completed. Mark 1, Mark 1. Or these are just components. Okay. Skip World War One tanks, go right to inner war. That would be nice. I don't have the money to do that. Okay. So, if we go reverse engineering, no rival tanks yet. If we go to designs, rather than like researching components. Do we want to create a tank design now when we don't know what the exact demands are of a tank and a contract? That might get us ahead of the game in terms of winning a contract, but if we pick the right, wrong style of design, it might screw us. Okay. Go the Mark I hull. You can see this old style of, of tank hull. We can't, we have to choose an engine in here, which really there's only the Daimler Knight six cylinder. So we put that in there. We need running gear, which again, we really only have the centipede style running gear. So there's not a lot I can do right now with our tanks. So we've got the male sponson on the on the right side. Put a male sponson on the other side as well. In the front, we can put a six pounder, or actually those are in the sides. So put a six pounder in each side of the tank here. And again, it, it's kind of building itself, but let's be real. This is our first tank and we only have one design of everything. So this is probably not a great example of like, oh, we have a whole bunch of design options that we can that we can go with. Meanwhile, you can choose like how many crew members do you want in this tank, for example. So you can do a commander, driver, gunner. Well, we probably need two gunners actually, right? We've got two two main guns. I don't know if you need a gunner on the MG, but I suppose you might. 
for sure, at least two loaders and a mechanic. I'm getting a whole bunch of like complete the design process before evaluating the defects. I'm imagining this is not a very, uh, not a very efficient tank. So one commander, a driver, three gunners, two loaders, two mechanics. Well, I don't have any requirements for the design yet, J Street. Or, sorry, Flame. Two drivers? Can we do that? I don't have the option for two drivers. Okay. Expendables, HE shells. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know if the camouflage matters or not, but I like the idea of doing some camo. So that's the design, I guess. It's basically just a standard British World War I tank with the naval guns on each side and a machine gun in the center. This is a design, so it's going to take 18 days before the blueprints are done. So we've got to complete the design before defects will come up. We can't produce anything until we have a design, but this is we're going to the production hall here. And then resource storage here, which would be relevant once we actually get the assembly line going. You can import different things from different places and things like that. So like if we want to go ahead and order. Or actually, did they get rid of the ability to choose where your resources are coming from? Is it just one flat price? Or no, it's here. So you've got Oceania, Europe, Asia, Middle East, Africa, North America. You can sell excess resources too. So you've got kind of different markets. It's not specific like it was then where it was like buy from the Ottoman Empire or buy from whatever. But it still does have sort of regional regional pricing and stuff. Okay. So we're going to pull back to the factory grounds and then we'll start we'll start the clock and allow our research to unfold here so you can see it's 1940 it's july 1st of 1940 and the clock has started greetings my name is douglas murray and i've been appointed as your advi oh great so i just built designed that tank and now i'm getting an advisor so i should have waited for the tutorial ah. Did I not say 1914? It is 1914, yes. Is it going to try and tell me to design a tank now that I've already started the design of a tank? Or is it just... I mean, I've, already, I've already done that, so I guess let's just get back to the main screen and let time go. I jumped the gun. I beat the tutorial. Or beat it in terms of time. Battle, Battle of Lorraine's Lorraine started. So Western Front 1914 campaign has started. Germany and Britain, British forces are rapidly approaching each other. Make sure to follow the developments of the campaign and corresponding battles. If your tanks are participating in the campaign, the headquarters will provide you with detailed battle reports. Meanwhile, the Battle of Lorraine has begun between Great Britain and Germany. A brief but fierce fight of Lorien is unfolding between Germany and Britain. Rifle volleys and the thunder of artillery break the scene. Silence. The soldiers maneuver seeking cover. The skirmish between the 1st Posen Division and the 7th Hampshire Brigade regiments sets the stage for larger engagements that will unfold in this region. Now, the world map is shut off at this stage, so if I... I suppose... I don't know if there's... Yeah, you can follow the conflicts on the world map, but that world map is currently off. 
So keep that in mind. That's just because the game's in alpha stage. Following the early success of tanks on the battlefield. No, no. They really should have started this game in 1917 if they really wanted to like, be like, hey, this is World War One, Or maybe 1916, right? Uh, following early successes of tanks on the battlefield. What early successes? Nobody knows what a tank is. It's July of 1914. Hell, the war started before the war started. There's a reason it's called the guns of August and not the guns of July. Anyway, uh, additional tank regiments. Make sure to invest in your manufacturing capabilities. Uh, what are my man? Do I do I have any manufacturing capabilities? We go to production here. I have 300 people on line one. I don't know that I'm going to invest in putting more people in an assembly line until I actually have a contract in the sense of how much demand there will be. What about the uh, administration? We didn't check this building out. So we have 300 workers or 240 workers, a maximum capacity of 305. We have 80 of a total potential 160 engineers. Annual bank has a 15% interest rate on loans. We don't have any loans yet, so that's something you can do. You may employ, dismiss, and manage your top executives. So I haven't actually hired anybody. I could hire some executives. Eustace Denacor. Reduction of fire risk for all buildings in your factory grounds. Reduction of accidents. Reduction of hold time. Okay. So you can see this guy costs 3000 He seems to have the most traits. He is good with secondary weapons, primary weapons, turrets, structures, accidents, and fire. Walter Wilson is $500 less. He also has a fire focus. He also has an accident focus. He has a power unit focus, which is the reduction of power unit projects. So that's something the other guy doesn't have. And a running gear focus, which is something the other guy doesn't have. And then William Triton is half as expensive as Eustace, but he only has a maintenance and assembly focus. So he's really sort of an assembly line expert at a greatly reduced price. We'll go with the most expensive guy. Assuming I can hire him. Okay. We'll only hire one executive at the moment. You were wondering about research and development. So here's the tech trees. It's assigned to man hours. So the amount of people you assign, the amount of hours that they work is reflective of how long it takes for research to be completed. Right now we're working on, there's three different trees, the structure, firepower, and mobility trees. We're working on the firepower tree right now, working towards solid shot rounds. We've got 200 and, uh, 2,100 man hours required. That's nine more days with 20 uh, researchers, I guess, assigned to it. I wonder, can I do multiple? What's this? RH or rolled homogenous steel is made of single steel composite. This armor is designed for service applications that require maximum protection. Huh. So better armor. I kind of feel like better engines might be more important. So let's go with a twin engine. And twin engines required machinery. Casting focus and milling focus. So can I not do this one yet? Doesn't look like I can just like click on something and go. So I'm assuming And maybe this is wrong, but it looks like you're limited, at least as long as you only have one line, you're limited to one one research item per. One at a time, or at least per um, line that you have open up, and we only have the one. 
Well, that's fine. Let's just, let's get toward, I think we've just learned that a new offensive has begun. Keep an eye on the progress reports of the military campaign and the corresponding battles in the headquarters report. So the Battle of Lorien is beginning. First Posen Division versus the 7th Hampshire Brigade. I don't know if I, I, I'm assuming I can't do anything with these other units. So you can see it's the one, one battlefield that's currently active. Don't forget to invest in new component development and modification if you haven't already. I don't think I did that yet, did I? We did the research for, yeah, we already, oh, never mind, we did. Is there anything else I need to be researching right now? Components, I suppose. Um, riveted assembly MLE two. I presume that's better. I don't really understand this screen. So I'm, these are modifications of existing components, I guess. So I guess these are like modifications would be upgrading upgrades of existing blueprints, perhaps. So you could have like a Mark II, Mark III, those kind of things. So the mail, mail spawn soon, for example, right now it has wrought iron armor. Assembly type is riveted. I'm assuming Emily one. Maybe it's two. No, it's one down here. I don't know that I can choose number two. I don't really have other components I can edit onto this stuff, though. You can, like, see most of the stuff. These are the same thing. Lewis 1, Mark 1, Daimler 6-cylinder, Mark 1. So until I start researching other items on the tech tray, I can't really do anything yet. But essentially, when you research a component, then you can mod. So there's like the core components of your tank, like your body, your guns, your armor, um, your engine. You can upgrade those individual items, but then you can also modify each individual item if you have components researched. So if I have better armor, if I have better riveting techniques, if I have better shells or other things like that, I might be able to modify, you know, if I've got better... Um, rivets I could modify an individual component like a female sponson or a male sponson to have the better rivets so you'd get better than just the stock research stuff so a fair bit of, of customization that is available to you um, once you actually get things researched which as of right now I don't because we just got started all right following recent government announcements we should increase our production capacity you really want me to expand the production lines I guess I can assign a administrator to the uh, factory. So it looks like you can assign individual administrators to different buildings to run things. We have one assembly line, I believe, right now. But I don't even have a design yet, so I'm not really interested in opening up a second line. Again, we we have nothing to build yet. And again, I'm just working my way through this. Again, this game is very much an alpha, so this is not going to be like a super polished video here because we're we're learning together if you will the battle of lorian between germany and britain has concluded germany won the battle okay all right mark one design is completed 
We're increasing our operations and the risk of fire and human injury are growing more significant. Visit the administration quarter and construct fire and medical station to reduce these threats. So we can go to the administration building here and we can build a fire station, for example. It'll cost us 10,000 gold. We have 500,000. So go ahead and build a fire station. Also go ahead and build... Do we want a maintenance building? Allows you to reduce the cost of every building's monthly maintenance fees. Yeah, I don't really care about that yet. Skilled medical staff lowers the risk of accidents and injuries for employees. That seems important. So 21 days on the fire station and medical building. Meanwhile, in the actual production facility, that's a sub-assembly line. Improve production process by breaking the entire manufacturing cycle into smaller separate phases for individual components. Quick reconfiguration of the existing assembly lines in preparation for the production of new take designs. Okay. Yeah. It actually doesn't look like I can even open a second line yet. There's a lock symbol here, so... I want, I want no risk of accidents here while we produce. And I only have the one administrator, so I can't assign more workers yet to other activities. Actually, hiring an additional administrator for uh, research and development might not be a terrible idea. So let's go back to the research screen here. Not, sorry, not the administration screen. We've got the one employee. He's good at a lot of stuff. We could also hire somebody. All right, we'll have Walter hired. And when he arrives, we'll assign him to do some research and development because at least two of his traits to me seem like they're research and component related. So we have the design. Um, that's not really what I wanted to do. We keep clicking the wrong buttons here. No, we're already doing research. How far are we away from the next firepower? Oh, we completed solid shot, shot rounds. Okay, good. So now we can research something else. I don't know how useful tracer munitions are. What I really want is that twin engine. So we're going to research the Taylor Twin Cylinder 4. Uh, it's a swift modification of the engine used on London B-type buses. Okay. Well, that's still a single point of failure if each engine only drives one side of the tank, but. But we'll commit to that. Better engines, I think, is important. Because your tank can't really move if it's got just one track running. So we've got the Mark One. We've got 13 defects. The, oh my God. Total number of flaws discovered after the design was finished. Be sure to amend the defects in order to lessen their negative effects on both attributes and tank reputation. So extra power loss, insufficient vibration dampening, insufficient structure rigidity, blocked evacuation path for the crew, crammed environment, internal obstructions, Blocked vision ports. So but a lot of these are due to too many crew members, I believe. I don't know what volume limit means. Is there a way to... Please conduct factory trials at the proving grounds before addressing design flaws. Hmm. To me, it feels like if we just drop a crew member, it would go a long way to... Uh, 
resolving our issues rather than like building something we already know is a problem. So the maximum mass of the running gears can bear is 3331. We should be within the mass limit there. Same for crew. Huh. So what do we do? Build one tank and then throw it on the trials? So it is, it does, it is an experimental design. I'm assuming, and I'm going to check this, but I'm assuming I cannot run tank trials until after I've built at least one. Or maybe I can. That would be strange if I don't have to build it. But I guess I can drive my tank around here. Without having actually built the tank. Wrong building. Well. So it looks like it says we've got 10 minutes to do our thing which I don't know that this was ever like the core of what I wanted out of this game I wanted to be a you know a, a business mo mo mogul you know like Alfred Krupp I don't know that Alfred Krupp or anything like or whoever was running different uh different ar and I only say Krupp because he's like the only arms magnet I know I actually need to read a book I've got a book on him or not him but on the company the Krupp company uh that I need to read what happens if I drive over this? I can't do it. Oh, well, now I'm getting myself stuck. Okay. How do I switch guns? God damn it. Okay, so yay, we can blow stuff up. I, this is the aspect that I think is heavily influenced by uh, by Sprocket. How is any tank, like the point of a tank is not to weave between this kind of BS. The point of a tank is to like roll through obstacles but we should be able to get to 300 I think we got 7 minutes left MG's Why am I not hitting anything? That is a... I think that fires faster than a Lewis gun, but... Supposed to be taking these things out? Doesn't look like that's on the list of things to do. At least I don't I don't have any indicator that it wants me to destroy that stuff.
All right, so we're at 155. We got to get to 300. I wonder, can your tank break down or anything like that? Like, if I try and do something that the tracks or the engine or whatever can't support, it would be interesting if the game would be like, hey, you just threw a track, you know, a catastrophic failure or something. Yeah, McGib, obviously this is, like, none of this stuff has been built in July of 1914, so. Aware of that. But hey, the game's taken some creative liberties. Why am I not moving? I'm like clearly not off the ground. Oh, this is just joyful. Hey, ground. It's not mud as far as I can tell. And we are stuck. Du -du -du -du. And we are stuck. Let's see if we can slowly pivot. It's like there's a wall there or something. I'm not. Uh, what do I do? Hacker at World War One reliability. Perhaps. There we go. Get up that hill. Can I just run these guys over? Does that count? Apparently not. That would be cool. All right, we're at 225 points. We got four minutes to go in the most exciting tank combat known to YouTube. And I'm speaking a little tongue in cheek. I know the game is still in alpha stage, so keep that in mind. It's not for sale or anything like that. It will be available if it isn't already to the Kickstarter backers who supported the Kickstarter. But other than that, you know, it's obviously still very much in development. And... Over the sandbags we go! Alright, I think there's a good chance we'll get to 300. We got three minutes left. Yeah, for an alpha, it looks pretty good. Some of the mechanics are a little bit wonky, but again, alpha. Three minutes left and we are just 15 points shy. Enemy tank! Traverse, right! Fire! First tank trials at Hatfield, mission complete. 14 of 15 waypoints. Exceptional performance. Success in attack will greatly depend on the methodical and punctual deployment. Okay. I don't know what that means. Does it not want me to continue to the actual final? Like, I, I didn't run out of time yet. That's weird. It ends as soon as you hit 13, 300 points. All right, so we're putting our tank through trials, so we got to wait 20 days while that happens. I still think you should be able... I think the game should require you to build a, a, a tank before you can do prototypes. To me, that... Or before you can do testing. To me, if you're, if you're actually doing trials and things like that, I would like the game to say, hey, you have to complete these before... Or you have to build something to actually put on the proving grounds. All right, Britain announces a new contract for 12 tanks. BEF unit capable of standing enemy assault, but required a mobile mobility to support and exploit success. 
As such, a new regiment of Company A is being raised with an anticipated 12 tanks capable of sorting, supporting the BEF in the struggle against the enemy. Where's the contract section here? No. center all right so what they want all right so it looks like our competitors are offering a light tank by the looks of this this looks like twin track light tank not the mark 5 chassis contract requirements 30k mass I don't know that I have a design that would fit this. I guess in theory it actually does fit it. It's just too heavy. All the other requirements are good. It's just too heavy. But... We're not going to submit that quite yet. Deadline is August 22nd. So we've got some time. I want to see if I can push that design through proving ground trials before we submit. I don't know how long it takes to resolve issues. All right. If we put our new guy in here does this speed things up nope right, we already got someone there put our new guy in the administ well no we wanted him to be R&D right And again, we got a nice chunk of cash up here, but we're not, we don't have income until we're actually producing things and winning contracts. We don't have any income. I don't think we need to actually expand our production. I think our production is fine. The first order is only going to be 12 tanks. Yeah, I guess J Street, I guess I invented the heavy tank concept. Okay. Twin engine designed. Predicted balance at the end of next month is 350. So again, that balance is going down. Whoops. Have you ever tried driving your own tank? Yes, I actually have. Thank you. All right, so we built new facilities. That's good. We built the fire station. I don't know what all this. I'm getting dizzy watching this. What, what am I looking at? All right. So, um, the tank is done in the proving grounds. Do we go back to design and see what we can... See what we can do. So do we just pay money to fix the designs then? Crew awareness is severely limited when vision ports are blocked. Amend the defect to reduce the penalty. Is that literally all we have to do? Problem fixed. Money. Okay. I guess. 
Um, can we reduce the mass of... Well, I guess I think we're going to win the design regardless of... Kind of expensive to just fix these issues, though. I don't know if that's going to be reflected in profit on a order of 12 tanks. But hey, you know what? This is our first tank. We want to make sure that... Well, some of these are actually not even going to cost anything or going to cost very little. I guess it makes sense where it's like insufficient dampening, like throw in some extra dampeners, you know. But I want to make sure the first tank is is something that uh, they're happy with. So we have two more design problems, I guess. What are they? Insufficient roller access, volume limit, and cramped environment, crew limit. I don't know that I can fix those. Um, so if I add like an extra mechanic, can I do that? Doesn't look like it. In any event, I think this design's good enough now. Only two defects, slightly overweight, but that shouldn't matter. So let's go ahead and submit our tank for this design. You can see we lose a little bit of points for being too heavy. But in terms of the success score, it's 278. You want me to scroll to the bottom of the list? Oh, I guess I didn't scroll all the way down. Thank you for that. All the problems are fixed. The tank is perfect. Well. Um, do we want to rename this tank? Can I change the name? No. There we go. What should we call this tank? We'll call it the Gunslinger. Major, major. All right. Gunslinger Mark 1. Contract. We've got a 278 success score. Competing success score is much lower, like half of us. It's the Odysseus tank. Doesn't say who our competitor is. Unless the that's not the tank name. It's the competitor. I'm not sure. But I assume we will win. Meanwhile, it says $43,000 fine for every undelivered tank. Or two per undelivered tank. Meanwhile, a total... How does this say what our profit is when we, when, what's the build price? So contract details make a competitive offer by adjusting the price. Tank quantity and delivery deadlines. Review the success score for further details. So up here, if we take a look at the act, does it tell me what it costs to make my tank? I guess this is total profit, 516,000. So I could charge more. Do they want more tanks? Like if I offer more, they're making a regiment of 12 tanks. So do they need more? It looks like offering more makes them happy. But I don't know that it actually... So if I increase the amount of time I need, it definitely lowers my success rate. I don't know if I can build 12 tanks in a month. Before we submit that, let's go to our production line.
How many can we actually build of the Gunslinger Mark I? So right now we've got 6,000 man hour, or we've got... Where, where does it show my resources? So we've got plenty of iron, I think. 30,000 iron. Each tank costs about 900. 660 carbon steel. Each... We've got 25,000 there, so plenty if we want 12. Rubber, 10,000, so we've got plenty for that. High carbon steel, 240, plenty for that. Glass, 23, plenty for that. So we should have plenty of resources to hit the minimum order of 12. So, resources should not be an issue. We know that the order is for 12 tanks. Does it tell me it's going to take 6,000 man hours per tank? Got 240 employees. So, I can start a production run. Let's do 16 tanks in case there's... One of the other things is there can be problems in shipping your tanks. Tanks can be damaged or whatever, I believe. So let's do an order of 16 tanks, which gives us a little bit of a buffer. Fifty-two days. That's a problem. Um, I have, I have like 30 days according to what the contract is. If I cancel this, do I still, do I get all my stuff back? It looks, I may have lost something, but it was definitely not the full amount. 52 days is for 16 tanks. Yeah, I know, I know. So what is 12? 12 will take 39 days. We can always make a second order of additional tanks, I assume. Which probably gets us closer. I can also hire more workers to speed things up. So 39 days, we'll go here. Application, we've got remaining 13 days. Deadline's the 23rd. So let's, let's start our production and hold off on actually bidding for just a few more moments. We'll go to the we'll go to the anti-tank weapons appear. Okay, new technology for anti-tank weapons. We'll go to the 18th. All right, production hall. 31 more days left on the gunslinger mark one. I don't believe the order will complete. Like I don't think I have access to the partially completed tanks in the order. 21% in progress. Oh, no, we do have the two in stock. Okay. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Arms Trade Tycoon Tanks. My first look at the closed alpha for this game. As I've said multiple times throughout, this is an alpha. The game is not anywhere near complete, uh, but they did give me access to it. It had a demo a couple of years ago that was really interesting. I definitely think that the game still has some of the strong points it did back then. Uh, they've made quite a few changes to the game map and other things like that. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how this played out. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. We'll see how this episode played out in our next episode. Sorry we didn't quite get to the fulfilling the contract stage. Building and con contracting are the two big pillars of this game, I feel like, in terms of the game loop. Uh, but we at least designed a tank, did some R&D, and started our production, expanded some of our workforce. And we'll see how things play out in our next episode. 
Until then, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.